The Trinidad Jane Doe, 1980, identified as Denise Cruz. We start now in Trinidad, California, which is located in Humboldt County. It was on February 11, 1980, that remains were found of a female who was estimated to have been there for around three weeks. She was likely 25 to 30, white, and around 5'9", or 175 centimeters. She had long, reddish-brown hair and weighed around 145 to 175, which is about 66 to 79 kilograms. The woman had received a skin graft, where skin was taken from her right thigh and placed onto her right shoulder. They believe she also walked with a limp. There are postmortem pictures out there that you can find by searching the Doe Network. She was wearing men's corduroy pants, a gray turtleneck sweater that was marketed as men's clothing, and it had a name attached that said Arnold L. Peterson II on the inside. Underneath the sweater, she had on a homemade smock that was yellow, blue, and green flowers, as well as Nike shoes and men's socks. They determined the COD was an accidental OD, and there was no foul play. But without any local missing person report, they hit a brick wall. Her undergarments were men's corduroy western-style tan pants, 34 by 30. She had on blue suede Nikes with white trim, size 9 and a half. Additionally with her was a double-breasted rain jacket, a Sears sportswear jacket, a blue day pack that had Diane Mill, San Francisco, written on it. Additionally, she had three unmarked bottles with doxapin and florazepam. I should probably touch quickly on those two meds because they may be a window into what was going on at the time. So keep in mind, Google is my answer for this, so I don't have any personal knowledge on this at all, but it looks like doxapin is primarily used for insomnia because it makes the user drowsy, but it was originally developed for depression. But then, of course, there are also off-label uses. It's a tricyclic antidepressant. It's from the first group of antidepressants that were developed in the 1950s and they tend to have more side effects than the ones we take now. Usually now we use serotonin reuptake inhibitors, which you'll also hear referred to as SSRIs. Additionally, she had florazepam in her system, which is a benzodiazepine. These are depressants that produce sedation and can relieve anxiety, muscle spasms, and reduce seizures. The current most commonly used benzodiazepines are Valium, Xanax, Halcyon, Ativan, and Clonopin, which I'm sure is pretty familiar to a lot of people. Neither of these medications had a prescription label with her, so it's impossible to know how she got them or why. It's possible she was self-medicating. It's hard to say. It also doesn't say exactly what caused her OD, whether it was these drugs. When she was found, she was in a wooded area inside of a sleeping bag. Funding for the DNA was done by Roads to Justice, and it was Othram Labs who made her identification. In August of 2023, her profile led to a man named Mark, who appeared to be the brother of our Jane Doe. He would explain that his sister had gone missing in September of 1979. This was five months before she was found. He provided his DNA, and it matched. Mark would share with investigators that Denise would have been 27 when she was found. It's not clear when he last saw her. It appears she was out of contact with her family. They had no idea what happened to her believing she may have been living somewhere else. Denise Gale Cruz went unidentified for 43 years. Had she lived, she would be 70 years old today. The Harris County John Doe, March 2002, Houston, Texas, identified as Hector Garcia. This story begins on February 4, 2002 in Texas when investigators were called to Spring Creek Bridge off of Kickapoo Road in Houston, Texas. A young man was found face down in a creek wearing tan and black Dockers brand windbreaker, a black and tan checkered Nautica shirt, polo jeans, and brown leather shoes. He was the victim of a shot wound to his chest. They believe he was really close to the age of legal adulthood up to 32 years old. He had short black hair, and a tattoo of three vertical Gothic-style letters on his left calf. The letters appear to be H, J, and either a D or a G. His clothing made it appear he was not homeless, and along with the tattoo, police were hopeful they would be able to identify him. However, that did not happen. In 2021, the Harris County Institute of Forensic Sciences 
submitted some forensic evidence in this case to Othram Labs in Woodlands, Texas. This is yet another case funded through a grant from Roads to Justice, which is always great to see as funding is one of the biggest barriers in these cases. Othram's in-house forensic genetic genealogy team did the search itself in-house, although other cases might use their own genetic genealogy team, such as the team at DNA Doe Project. And with this, once again, Hector Jose Garcia had his name. He was not even quite an adult yet. His age displayed on the screen to avoid YouTube from turning my comments off again. He was born in November of 1985 in Hildago, Texas. He was known to be living in Galveston, Texas, which is where one of his parents were, and he was reported missing. Despite him being found only 50 miles or 80 kilometers away, he wasn't identified. But of course, missing teens are always a hot button sort of topic. According to a 2021 report from findthekids.org, about 97.8% of the 500,000 children who go missing in the United States annually are found. That means each year about 511 of the 500,000 stay missing. So odds are in these cases they will be found, and that's probably plays in a lot to why there's been problems historically over the years with getting teens actively listed as missing. Another statistic states that 9 out of 10 are runaways. And of course, there's also non-custodial parents versus runaways. There's all kinds of things that can go on. So for whatever reason, they didn't realize this was Hector, despite his being so close to home all this time. We know that Hector had gone to celebrate Mardi Gras with some of his friends. I imagine his family knew who he was with, and something happened to separate him from his friends. There's a lot that hasn't been released. If I find anything more, I will post it on the screen now. Hector Jose Garcia went unidentified for 21 years. Had he lived the life he deserved, he would be 38 years old today. Huge thanks for watching all the way to the end, and a big thanks to all of you who consistently like and comment on the videos. Whether you leave a full comment or an emoji, it makes a huge difference. So if you consistently watch my videos, maybe take a moment to subscribe. It's a huge push toward the videos being suggested to new people. The next goal is 20,000. Thanks everyone for watching. Take care of yourselves and each other.